Hi everyone, today's video is a wrap up of all the books that I read in March. Now you'll probably notice I did not read nearly as many books as I usually do. That's because I have been listening to a lot of podcasts in the past month or so. I've done a video on the podcasts that I've really got hooked on and I will put a link in the description to that if you're interested. But I finished binge listening to a whole lot of different podcasts and now I think I will be heading back down the audiobook route. So there's a bit of variety in the stuff that I read in the past month. The first one was this lovely book by my friend Jen and this is a poetry pamphlet which is a collection of the poems that she wrote when she did the 100 poem challenge and she wrote all of these in a weekend. I don't know how she did it, she's absolutely phenomenal. All of the poems in here are very short and so very digestible and it, I would say that if you're if you're new to poetry then this would be quite a good place to start. I found that this was quite a good warm up to some of the other poetry that I've been reading recently. I read the poems in this over quite a number of months and they're just, they're just delightful. Some of them are made up of little lists like this or just a single, a single phrase or a single line. Other ones are little conversations or dialogues. So even though they're all very short, there's a lot of variety in here and it's, it's just wonderful. The second book was an audiobook and this was More Anthology by Catlin Moran. It's her new book. It's out and oh it's glorious. I read How to Be a Woman a good few years ago and that was the first time that I really sort of identified myself as a feminist and started labelling myself as a feminist. I'd never not thought of myself as a feminist but I hadn't ever thought to, to label myself as that as sort of one of the top five things that I am as a person. After reading How to Be a Woman I also read her collection of Times articles which was compiled into a book called More Anthology. I've also read her novel How to Build a Girl and this is her most recent collection of Times articles of, of columns and so she talks about a huge range of topics in this. A lot of it really revolves around politics and that's why it's called Moranifesto. At the core there's this idea that everyone should write their own manifesto and have in written form what your ideals are and what you would do if you ruled the world. But this collection made me laugh so much and it also made me really really angry in places and I mean that's the nature of reading about feminism, especially if you're a woman, especially if you encounter these things on a day-to-day -day basis. Catelyn Moran is very accessible, very readable, you really hear her voice coming through, it's not dry in any way. And the audiobook, even though it's not narrated by Catelyn herself, it is narrated by somebody who really captures that voice very well. Okay, book number three is also an audiobook and this one was Arcadia by Ian Pears and Wow, wow, wow. This was the only novel that I read this month and it blew me away. It was really, really incredible. I won't try and give you a full plot summary here because there are so many things going on in this book. There are 10 different threads, 10 different stories that you're following. There are multiple versions of things. It's very David Mitchell in that sense. You've got different timelines. You've also got different universes, which is the, the core, the, the centre of this novel really. I have not read a book with this much intertextuality in a very long time. It's, it's one of those books that just as I was reading it I kept being reminded of things like Name of the Wind, there are obvious references to Narnia and to Tolkien, large chunks of it read like a love letter to his dark materials, you've got Shakespeare and Chaucer and Alice in Wonderland, Murakami, it's it's absolutely incredible and it's a mind-blowing book. It's the kind of thing that you want to read more than once and I think I will go back and reread this at some point before too long, I hope, because th there's so much that I know that I didn't get on the first time round and that that is the sign of a really good book, is when you want to reread it and delve even deeper. I probably wouldn't suggest the audiobook for this because there are so many different parts, so many different uh, threads and it could be quite confusing. I would suggest picking up the physical copy if you can. I believe this is coming out in paperback in June. I listened to the audiobook because I was reading this for book club and there was no way that I was going to have time to read it as a physical book. But if any of that sounds like the kind of thing that you would like then do give this a go. There's also an app, there was an app developed to help you keep track of all the, the different characters and you can actually read the entire book 
in this app and you can read it in different orders as well. So if you want a taste of this book, you can just download the app and it will give you the first few chapters of each story and then you can continue to purchase them through there if, if you want to or pick up the physical book at your local bookshop. Jen has actually done a full review on this where she talks more about the intertextuality and she doesn't give too much away, which I think was very impressive. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll link that below. Then I read a business book and I, I had mixed feelings about this. In fact, I, I, not so mixed maybe, I just didn't really like it all that much. Uh, it's Girl Boss by Sofia Amoruso. She is the CEO and founder of Nasty Gal, which is a shop which started on eBay selling vintage clothing. I kind of hoped that this would give me more business advice, things that I could really cross over into my freelance career and I, I just felt like there was a lot of fluff in this book. A lot of her stories that weren't really tied back to, to something really practical and I suspect I know why I didn't like this so much. It's because I've been listening to this fantastic business podcast called the Sean West podcast where the information is so wonderfully distilled and it's put into these really easily digestible pieces and I just felt like in this whole book there wasn't as much value as I've got out of one episode of one of those. So yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really recommend this. Maybe it would be helpful if you were doing something more similar to what, what she's done, but even so, I, I just wasn't very impressed by this. And the next book I wasn't overly fond of either, and I think this is just me. I think this is one of these books that so many people will really love, and I know that so many people have loved it, because I have a lot of friends who have read it recently and adored it but it just it just wasn't wasn't my cup of tea and that's sweet home by Karis Bray i went into this expecting to absolutely love it i think just the themes in this were not ones that i connected to as much as other people have it has a lot to do with family and particularly parenthood which is not something that i enjoy reading about as much as other things. I just felt a bit of a disconnect. It is still very well written and I wouldn't try and put anyone off reading this, especially because I know other people have loved it so much. So yeah, it wasn't for me, but it might be for you. I sandwiched this month with two poetry collections. So I started off with Jen's poetry collection and I finished with Kate Tempest's Hold Your Own. And I think this might be the best poetry collection that I have read at least the one that I have enjoyed the most. The themes in this are so very powerful. There's there's one poem in particular which is called The Bully and that one just really hit home for me. There's a wonderful mix of modernity and classical myth in here. It centres around Tiresias, the blind prophet from Greek myth and you've got lots of other Greek and classical allusions in here as well. It deals with gender and sexuality. The gender of Tiresias changes throughout this. You've got these sort of key poems. There's one at the beginning, which is the longest one in the collection, and then you've got other ones throughout which really focus on, on Tiresias, the character, and different iterations of Tiresias. I'm still finding it quite difficult to talk about poetry and review poetry because you can talk about it in a sort of objective way and talk about the metaphors and the similes and the way that language is constructed but the thing about poetry is because it's so distilled and it's it's so about emotion especially in this one that I, I find it difficult to to talk about it in an objective way, at least in terms of being able to recommend it to other people in a, in a review-like fashion. I will do my best to get better at this, but I, I would recommend this. I would highly recommend this. And it's not just me, because it's won lots of prizes and other people love it. Anyway, those are the books that I read in March. If you have any thoughts on these, or if you've read any of them, or if you are interested and have any questions, do put those in the comments down below. If you want to find me elsewhere online, I am at Holly Dunn Design on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest. And if you want to see my design work, my website is hollydundesign.com. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!